All right, what's up guys? We're gonna talk about ranking your mover roster. So how do you organize your roster and how do you kind of keep tabs on like who's who's moving up and who's maybe coming down? Because if you don't have a really great pulse on the life of the team, like the the energy of who's really developing and who's becoming leaders in the group and then who's kind of just been striking out and you know, been showing up late and not having a great attitude. Um, Because if you don't have a tab on this, then in an operation standpoint, one, how do I know who I, who, who gets, who gets called and booked first for jobs? Uh, How do you know, like, whether you should give somebody a raise or not on performance reviews? How do you know, like, if you need to hire new people? So I think if you have a really good roster list, meaning the roster list should be like the holy grail thing. Like this is, um, and this is, in my opinion, this isn't shared with all your movers. This is just your leadership team. So that might just be, you know, if you're a smaller business, it might just be you, the owner. Um, if you've got maybe an ops manager or GM or office manager, some people that help in the office, they're shared on it. But it's not for everybody to see because it's going to have some internal notes that honestly uh it, it is for the leadership team it's so that way you can document and know how people have been doing and so you can make this with with as simple as like a google spreadsheet or an excel document it doesn't have to be something fancy anybody that's like spending a bunch of money on fancy tools and crazy widgets and stuff i mean you can build multi multi million dollar business with like Google Drive products from a like spreadsheet standpoint, you know, you're, you're gonna need to pay for some other softwares, but let's get into this. Let's talk about some, some strategies. So there's lots of ways you can rank movers. You know, I've heard of people that have like team A, team B and team C, right? So you have it in three tiers. I've heard of companies where they have like first round draft pick, second round, third round, fourth round, right? One, two, three, four. You have like a level one mover, a level two mover, level three, level four like level four is the best, right? You could have, for instance, like when I worked at College Hunks, the way that they structured their guys, their roster, was you came in as a wingman. So a wingman was like just a mover helper. And then uh, above that, you had a truck captain, okay? These are just different job titles for the same stuff, right? I know a truck captain is a crew lead. And then there was a junior wingman and a senior wingman. And then there was a junior captain and then there was a senior captain. So lots of ways to label this stuff. But ultimately what you're doing is you're actually branching out the org chart because it's difficult, especially once you have 10 or a dozen guys plus, it's kind of hard to just say everybody's in the same spot. And what it also allows you to do is it allows you to systematize how you give raises and how you give offers. If somebody's coming in and they're going to come in at whatever we're calling it here, you know, uh, uh, let's call it a level, you know, level two uh, mover. And let's say level four is like the best of the best. Well, you know, I'm not going to be able to offer top pay. Like it's a way to quantify some of this stuff. So uh, whatever labels you want to come up with, if you want to come up with something fancy, go for it. But personally, I just think that keep things simple Make sure all of your management team understands the system and it's it's a tool at the end of the day. So your roster should really only have, your main roster should only have guys that are working you know, regularly on a weekly basis. If the guy only works one time a month for you and it's like more of a fill as you need person, you know, they're not necessarily on the roster. They're like on the call list. So that's kind of a separate thing. But people that are on the roster, you know, you should one, have their start date on there. I like knowing people's tenure. Also on the roster, you probably want their phone number so that way you have quick access. Um, even though that stuff should be saved in your phone, but everybody, everybody on your team might not have every guy's phone number saved. The other thing is obviously their name and then their rank, right? Their, their, their rank in the organization. So the way that I personally like doing it is I like uh, just giving a number system. The number system just makes things very clear. And again, this isn't something you're sharing out to all the guys because you can kind of, you know, get some animosity in the group if everybody starts finding out that, oh, I'm, you know, I'm in tier three or I'm in tier one. 
So my the system I've learned is just tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Um, four groups of guys. And uh, I think every company has a different definition on what each tier means. But ultimately tier one is what we want. Like we want tier one guys. We want guys that one, they work full-time hours. They n understand how to perform the job from a sense of they're very proficient at home protection, pad wrapping, tiering. They can drive, they have a driver's license. They can drive the truck. They can lead the job. They can speak with a customer. Um, they know your systems and processes and they're not perfect people, but they're the type of guy that you send out and you don't have to be calling two or three times checking in. Like, you know, that guy takes care of things. That is really for me what a tier one guy is. And to be tier one, you've got to be able to be a crew lead and you've got to be able to drive. Like you can't be a tier one guy and I have to sit here and like figure out, okay, well, Josh can't drive. So I got to have a driver on this crew. So that way they can do the job. That's a headache. If, if they're a tier one person, not a tier one person, a tier one mover, they need to be able to be a driver, okay? It's a prerequisite. Now, tier two and tier three, this is where it kind of gets a lot more gray. Um, I think you can build this out however you want. Um, you can put all kinds of different, you know, stipulations into this stuff. I just keep it simple. Guys that are tier two are really people that are working their way up the ladder. They're guys that they're earning their stripes and maybe they haven't been there that long and they're still learning some of the systems, they're getting better at the actual job itself. And they're starting to learn how to crew lead. They're starting to learn, you know, how to be, you know, that, that, that trust, that trusted crew lead that like you can send out and you don't have to think about them, but you still got to teach them stuff. You gotta, you gotta coach them along. And um, so tier two to me is kind of that junior style captain. And you know, there are people that still need that development. All four tiers need development. You have to develop all your people. You can't just you can't just work with your bad people to like work on your business. You need to work with your best people and you need to work with the bad people. You probably need to work with the best people more. Um, that's my recommendation. But tier three, tier three are guys that um, there are a lot, there's issues. There's things that you would probably want to change. You know, they show up late here and there. Sometimes they got bad attitude, but there's like positives that keeps them around. You know, there might be guys that they were, they used to be very good, but in the last couple of months, they've really kind of went sour and maybe they're not picking up as much work as you'd like them. So they're more part-time. Like that could be a tier three person. One thing that's important to note is that you may love like all of their personalities. Like a guy could have a great personality, but he could be in a tier three. If he is not an accountable individual and he shows up late and he's cursing in front of the customer on jobs he smells like stuff you shouldn't be smelling like when he comes into work, like that's not gonna fly, right? And tier four is a short-term tier. <laughs> uh, you don't wanna have, you don't wanna have anybody in tier four. Tier four are people that like seriously are like, they're on the way out. Um, your goal is that you don't want people in tier four. Really, you should only have people in tier one, two, and three. But you might have a guy that like, you're a little tight and you don't have, like you need the guy to kind of keep doing some jobs for a little bit until you get a new person in. But tier four is really people that you're trying to get rid of. Like you don't actually want them there. It doesn't mean you don't like them as a person, but they're just not the right fit for your business. And so tier four people are people that have had multiple strikes, multiple conversations. You've tried working with them on stuff. They continue to show up late. They continue to call out. And it's just a matter of time before you're probably separating. So tier four is like, X. <laughs> you don't want those people. The goal is that you only, the goal is that you only have tier one and tier two. I, I don't want to say it's impossible, but cause there's nothing is impossible, but it's very difficult to not have any tier three, uh, movers because there's always going to be somebody that's just kind of dropping the ball. Uh, you could have the sharpest, tightest team in the world, but, um, there's going to be a guy that, you know, there's gonna be somebody that's, that's, that's missing something. So the thing that you don't want again is you don't want tier four. You don't want that fourth category. And I like I find the benefit in having a fourth category so that way everybody on the team knows who's on, uh, <laughs> to put it in like, uh, what's that show? Survivor terms, if anybody ever watched that, is like who's on the chopping block? Like who's about to get voted off the island? That also should communicate well with the team 
like with the management team that like, look, we need, that should be telling you like, we need to hire somebody to make a replacement here. I typically, if you hire a brand new person, brand new people, typically I kind of dump in tier three, um, meaning like they don't know anything yet. They've never done moving. You know, they're not really tier two because they don't know anything but they could be tier two in like two or three weeks. So you should be looking at your, your roster every week. Like you should be looking and grading, like where's this guy at? Like, okay, he had a great week. Okay, cool. Like this is where he needs to be. And personally, this is how I would book jobs. Like I, I would give, you know, hours and take care of the guys that are, you know, tier one and tier two first. And then, you know, when the tier three guy comes and he's like, man, I didn't get any hours. And, and you say, well, here's why. The last three weeks, you've been late five times. I'm not going to schedule you that much if you show up late. Um, and whatever that is, whatever that looks like for your business. I think uh, in this industry, everybody's got a different standard. Your standard might be like, dude, we don't, nobody's late here. Like if they're late, we get rid of them. That's fine. But like not everybody's like that. Um, not everybody has that luxury. So overall, I find just a lot of benefit and again, it's the management team, the leadership team has access to this. This is not something you share to all your movers, but it's a way to uh, keep, again, keep a pulse on the roster and the group and know who's moving up, who's moving down, and really who you should be investing a lot of time in. The guys that are in tier one, that's who you need to spend the most time with one-on-one. -on -one. I think what ends up happening is we spend we have all these like conversations with the crappy guy in tier three, trying to get him to change, trying to get him to stop being late and to stop having a bad attitude. And we're having all these conversations, investing all this time and it goes nowhere. And then we don't spend any time with the guy that's great. It's like, no, that's like totally backwards. Yes, you gotta correct the guys that aren't doing what they're supposed to do, but invest po uh, quality time in the guys that are on the top of your roster because that's what's gonna keep them there, right? They wanna be appreciated, they wanna be invested in, they wanna be taken care of. Equip those guys, give them more training, give them more skills, show them how to do more. If you're wasting all your time with the crap guys on your team, that's why you're stuck. Invest time with the quality guys. It's not always perfect, okay? It's not, it's not going to be. But I think just having a, a system and a continual process of we can be better, we can make the roster better, we can have a sharper team, we can have a more cohesive team. Okay, that's another thing to be ranking people on is how are they when it comes to building the culture? Like, are they invested in the mission of the company? Are they invested in the vision of what you're building? That's a big part. If they're bought in and they're like, dude, let's go, I'm all in, that they, they rank much higher for me. I'd rather have a guy that's all in on the vision and all in on the culture and maybe he, he, he makes a mistake here and there on the service side than a guy that's like a master mover but like he could give two craps about your culture. Culture is sacred. So like that is ultimately, that's what you hire on. That is what you fire on. That's what you, that's ultimately like how you drive the company is the ethos, which is a Greek word for character. Um, you build the company based on character, right? So um, I know there's a couple of people watching this live, so um, appreciate you guys. And every week, just try to give you some value. Uh, I don't have anything to like push at you. Obviously, I think if you're in this group, you know that uh, our company does hiring and recruiting. So if you need help with that, we'd love to help. Uh, just want to provide some value and help some people. All right, see you guys.